Let's sign additional property called image index. And we're going to change what image is displayed in a button based upon the current state of the pump. To do this, we're going to need an image list control. If we drag that into the form, it will appear down below the form design in its own component area. If we right click and select properties of the image list, we first might want to change the image size. Instead of 16 by 16, let's go for 32 by 32 as the size of the images we're going to use in the con control. And then in the images property, we'll use the browse button to then add three new images. I'm going to add these images from our installation directory under the program group, under program files, and then open automation software, opcsystems.net, you'll find a symbols directory. Within that directory, you can find GIF or uh, PNG images. Let's select the 32 pixel size images, and from this, we'll select three images to display for the pump. The first, first image we'll select is the red uh, pump when the pump is off. The next one we'll add is a green pump. And the third, when the signal is unknown or you've lost connection from your application, we have a bad quality representation for that signal. So let's use a yellow pump as an indication of warning that communications has lost. So we now we select OK. We are now going to define this image list 1 to the pump button. So let's go back to the properties of the OPC controls button. Go down to the image list property and use the scroll down to define that to image list 1. We are now ready to define the image index OPC systems underscore tag property and we will browse for that local pump signal. Now when the pump is off we will display the first image of index 0. When the pump is on we will display the second image of index 1 and when the we have bad quality we will use the image index OPC systems bad quality index and we'll say use image index 2 when the quality of the pump signal is bad. To arrange where that image appears we'll use the image align. We can use middle center or at this example we're going to use middle left. So that we can see that image better let's change the back color OPC systems tag and let's clear that property so it maintains as a gray back color. Now when we run the application we can see what that looks like. In the background of the pump we see the green symbol when it's running and when the pump is off we see the red symbol. There are many other properties of the OPC controls button. To take a look at those in use, if we go back to the example application under opcsystems.net and then select the example application. If we then select controls buttons, we can see that we can change the back color, the for color, the enabled property, visible property. With the uh, enabled mode, you can see that you cannot click on or execute a button that has been disabled. But yet I can click on a button that is enabled. So if I click on that, that toggles the state. Now everything indicates that the pump is on. And we see a different image index here. We can also do keypad entry. If we select that, we can enter a specific value. And now the value is 12 as being displayed in the text property of this OPC controls button. We can also move the buttons. Here we see the button moving on the y-axis based upon a dynamic signal. 
and here we see a button moving horizontally based upon the same signal. You can also resize buttons based upon signals. Some of the other controls are also demonstrated here in the VB.NET example. If we take a look at the text box property, we can see that we can change the four color, back color, visible, enable, timestamp coming from a signal. Here we're going to use the text box to enter in a specific value for the pump. So we can enter in a zero or the word off to change the pump to an off state or enter the text on or a value of one and change the pump back to on. Let's put an OPC controls text box onto our example application we are building. So if we from the toolbox we'll select OPC controls text box drop that onto the form and again right click to select properties or hit the F4 key. We're going to go down to the text called text OPC systems underscore tag. We will browse for a particular tag on the local system. This time we're going to connect directly to an OPC server that we want to write a value to. To do that we'll click on the plus sign to the left of direct OPC. This is a different data source type. Let's go down to the OPC server called EEI.OPC simulator which should install with your OPC systems.net software and if we select under sim device there's an out test group go ahead and expand that out test group and we have the signal out one we're going to define an OPC update rate of one second and a data type we're going to use as a double float We'll click OK, and that will then define a tag that is special that has the designation of direct OPC, which indicates that it is going through the OPC system service, but it is connecting directly to the OPC server, getting that item without having to create an OPC systems.net tag. Again, if you haven't reviewed the data sources video, I would recommend to do this. You'll see that data sources are possible from databases, Visual Studio applications, OPC servers, and OPC clients. Now under the text property, we want to take a look at what is the format that's going to be displayed for that float signal. Right now we have 0 0.000 with three digits to the right of the decimal point for the resolution. We want to leave the property text OPC systems send value on enter at true. This allows the operator to send a value when they have the cursor on the text box and hit the enter key. Whatever text is in that text box will be sent to the tag defined under text OPC systems underscore tag. We also have the property called text OPC systems disable update with focus. With this set to true, when the focus is in the text box, dynamic data will not update the text box. This makes it operator friendly that when they're entering a new value that their entry will not be overwritten from a value. When they leave focus from the text box, it will return back to the current value of the OPC systems.net tag. Let's see what this looks like in action. So if we run the application, There we see that the current value is 12. Now I can go ahead and type in a value of 23, hit the enter key, and that value has now been sent. To see that, we'll move the cursor out of the text box to remove the focus, and we'll see that the text updates to the value 23.000. To see what other controls are possible. Let's go back to the example application again under the program group opcsystems.net. If we take a look at controls, we have checkboxes. With a checkbox, you can assign the check property to a particular tag, so when it's clicked, it changes the value 
of the tag is defined to. We also have radio buttons. So here we can turn the pump on. We have group boxes with enable or disable states. Under controls we also have list boxes so you can use them to define multiple values to different text strings so if we click on the list box on the number 14 the value will change to four, will be written to 14 here on the pump we can click on the list box to turn the pump on or turn the pump off we also have combo boxes here we'll change the value to 15. You see that they also dynamically update. We have horizontal and vertical scroll bars. We have track bars. When using a track bar to write to values, there's the option to write while the mouse cursor is down in this example. So while we're moving the track bar back and forth, the value is written continuously. Or you can just do it while up. So now when I release the mouse, the value is written at that particular point. And we also have status bars.